Hello again, as you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and today's class is PaaS or Platform as a Service Introduction. So today we are going to be talking about the concept of what is Platform as a Service. So we've been doing a lot of classes on cloud computing and virtualization because that is the future of IT. That is the future of technology. Whether you're using public clouds, whether you're using private clouds, whether you're using hybrid clouds, Basically, clouds are the equivalent of PCs of today. Back in the 80s, when the PCs were being debuted, that was the latest and greatest thing. Now, in 2013, it's all about cloud technology. But the problem that we keep getting into is whenever people start talking about cloud technologies and cloud services, they always talk as if the cloud is just one homogenous thing. They talk about the cloud. But the cloud is really lots and lots lots and lots of different technologies, it's lots and lots of different architectures, it's lots and lots of different ways of looking at how to accomplish tasks or build solutions. So when we're talking about the cloud, the cloud comprises lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff. And if you go to a professional technologist and you just start talking about the cloud, that really doesn't mean a whole lot to him because the cloud's a big thing. Like, what are you talking about when you're talking about the cloud? So today we're going to be talking about the concept of platform as a service. So we did two classes already, software as a service and infrastructure as a service. So with software as a service, basically what happens is instead of software being installed on your computer, the software now actually resides in servers up in the cloud. So somebody else has servers that are running the software and you connect to those servers somehow, either through a web browser or a thin client or something like that. But basically the idea with software as a service is the software itself is running on somebody else's servers and you simply connect to it. We talk about infrastructure as a service. So infrastructure as a service is where you start taking those racks of servers, your firewall, your telephone system, and instead of actually buying that equipment and installing that equipment and maintaining that equipment, that infrastructure equipment, you now actually buy the services from a provider and simply receive the results. So instead of having a telephone system in your building, you simply have voice over IP telephones that connect to a hosted voice over IP solution. Instead of managing your own firewall, your, your, fi your network connects to a services firewall and they manage your ports and all of that kind of stuff. Instead of having servers uh, actually within your building, you buy something either through Amazon Web Services or a dedicated server somewhere. Basically, you rent the server and whatever software or configurations run on somebody else's server and you get back the results. When we start talking about platform as a service, this is basically for the programmers out there. So either for the startup companies, the people who want to create the next Twitter, the next Facebook, the next Foursquare, something like that. Or if you are if, if you are part of an organization that has proprietary software that runs, some place for you to run that proprietary software. So what happens is when you buy platform as a service is essentially you get a base level platform that you can then dump your code into and then your code will run. So when we're talking about platform Platform as a service, we're almost always talking about some kind of web-based application. Now the simplest, the simplest platform as, as a service is the good old-fashioned shared hosting plan from one of the, uh, the the web services providers such as GoDaddy or OneInOne.com. So if you remember those, right, those little $5 shared web hosting plans, that is the simplest um, concept of platform as a service. You you don't worry about the, uh, the, the PHP.ini file. You don't worry about the RAM. You don't worry about the processor. You don't worry about the updates to the server. You don't worry about any of that. All you worry about is you get one folder to dump all of your code into, and then that code uses the services that are provided to run. So if you have something, let's say you want uh, WordPress to run, basically you need to find a shared hosting plan that provides MySQL, 
the database and provides PHP, the scripting engine. If it has that, you can dump your code in and it will simply run. Again, you don't have to worry about installing PHP. You don't have to worry about the php.ini file. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff. All you get is the folder and then from there, your, your, your web application can run. So as we've been getting more sophisticated, as we've been getting things have been getting more complicated, this concept has gotten more advanced. So now instead of simply having a shared hosted plan, you can go to something like Google App Engine or even Amazon Web Services, and they can give you much more sophisticated platforms for you to work on. They have storage platforms, they have payment gateways, they have all of this stuff that you can use. Again, you don't have to worry about the servers that are running. You don't have to worry about the hardware. You don't have to worry about the operating system. You don't have to worry about antivirus. You don't have to worry about malware. You don't have to worry about all of that. All you have to worry about is you simply get your folder, you dump your code in, and hopefully your code runs right as long as you, uh, you did it correctly. So when we're talking about these platforms as a service, basically when you go out to buy a platform as a service, one of the things that you have to look at is what is actually provided for you. Because this can be a big deal, especially with these platforms now, they get more and more complicated. Uh, they offer more solutions, but they can also be more difficult to use. So when you're going to be going out and using some kind of platform as a service, you do have to make sure that whatever the web application you have that's going to run can actually work with it. So some of these platforms, uh, you can use Python, some you can use Ruby, some you can use something called Go from Google. It, it really depends on basically what you are purchasing. But basically, you just take your, take your web code, as long as it works with their services, you dump it in, and away you go. Just like with software as a service, though, if you're going to be using one of these platforms as a service, you do need to make sure that the company that you are going to be using, you trust to be there for a long, 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 long time migrating your web application from one platform to another can be anywhere from a little tiny pain in the butt to a big massive oh hell why don't we just all pack it up and go home pain in the butt it really 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 depends so this is something that you have to think about so if you're going to be migrating let's say you're, you're using a shared hosted plan you've created some little web app and whatever company you're using goes away and you have to migrate that. That's not necessarily that difficult to do. You have to move over the code, you may have to export the database, that's not a big problem. But once you start creating bigger and bigger and bigger applications, again, the next Twitter, the next Facebook, when you build out your web application to use the underlying platform, you are going to create very specific code that will not be reusable necessarily if you move over to another solution. If you build your code to work with Google App Engine, for some reason, if you decide to leave Google App Engine and go over to AWS, your code will not necessarily work when you move over. You may literally have to rewrite quite a bit of code when you do that migration. So this is one of the things you have to think about. Again, there are lots and lots and lots of startup companies out there. They're all trying to become the next Amazon, the next Google, all of that. Some of them will win, a whole bunch of them will lose. And one of the things you have to be careful about is you don't want your web app running on the platform of the loser, right? <laughs> Very, 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 very bad thing. So this is something to, to keep in mind when you're going to be looking for a platform for your web application to run on. The other thing that you should be thinking about when you're looking for a platform for your web application to run on is what is the actual performance? And this is something that you really have to keep in mind, especially uh, depending on what kind of web app you are going to be running. <sighs> Why I have found this in the real world is, again, I, I hang out with a lot of the startup folks. I, have, I, I hang out with a lot of the people trying to create the next Facebook, the next Twitter, all of that. And a lot of them are using platforms as a service, Google App Engine, Amazon Web Services, Azure, because it is a lot easier to do it that way than to actually build their own server. So they could build their, buy their own server, build their own server, put that server into a data center, and have all the headache of that. And and they decide, no, what we're going to do is we're going to use some kind of platform as a service. We're just going to use AWS. We're just going to use Azure. We're just going to use Google App Engine. Maybe Rackspace has something. We're just going to use one of those things because we don't want the headache of what happens if a power supply dies or any of that. One of the problems, though, is when you use these platforms as a service, many times what is called the I.O. performance is absolute and utter garbage. 
<laughs> so Eli the computer guy dot com and a couple of the other things I run actually run on a dedicated server um, that again that I rent from one and one dot com I could use Amazon web services or any of these other things but but what I found was the IO performance was so poor that I didn't want to use it. So what is the IO performance? The IO performance is what is called the input output performance. So anytime the operating system has to go to the hard drive to pull data to give it to your end user, that's the input out per performance. So whenever pictures are going to get pulled up, whenever videos are going to get pulled up, basically anytime the operating system has to go to the hard drive and pull data to give it to the end user, that's the IO performance. What I have found with these platforms as a service is many times the IO performance is really, 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 really atrocious. And, and I mean, really to the point that it's worth spending a hundred bucks a month on my own dedicated server just so the website really, really, really runs pretty well. This is something to be thinking about uh, if you're going to be looking uh, at platforms as a service with the I.O. performance. Because if you're going to have five users or ten users, especially for some kind of in-house application, you know, if it takes a couple extra seconds, hey, who cares? You know what, if you've got ten users inside your organization that are going to be using this web app, yeah, what, what, what else are they going to do? <laughs> That's a nice thing. If you have a proprietary web app in your company, it's not like they're going to go to the competition. If they have to wait an extra second for the page to load, hey, who cares? It doesn't matter. But once you're in the the, the, the the capitalistic world where you're actually trying to sell your web service to clients, it could matter a lot, especially under load. So once you start getting more and more users, is that platform going to slow down till it becomes an atrocious mess? So this is something that you have to think about too. Again, if you're going to use a platform as a service, if you have 10 concurrent users on there, it may fly. It may be beautiful. If you have 100 concurrent users on there, it may be pretty good. If you have a thousand thousand concurrent users on there, it may start to slow. And then if you get 10,000 users on there, it might just almost break. It may not be able to do everything you need it to do. And I have seen this again uh, with some of the startup companies uh, that I've dealt with. They really will. You will get that little spinny wheel, the, the little uh, the, the little clock, and it will just keep going and going and going and going and going and going because they picked a bad platform and they have so many processes going on in the background. Um, the platform service that they purchased literally can't keep up with all of the things that's going on. So this is something that you really, really need to be thinking about with a platform as a service because depending depending on what you're doing if you're looking for some kind of platform uh, very very low no maintenance really no maintenance inexpensive uh, to get something up and running easy to get something up and running some kind of platform as a service can be a very very good thing but once you start talking about the whole performance issue either one many times platforms as a service don't work nearly as well as dedicated servers if you can get a hold of them or two it may get a whole hell of a lot more expensive than you're realizing a lot of people go to platforms as a service because again uh, client expectations, user expectations can kind of get you know, screwed up sometimes. And so what will happen is if you go to AWS or if you go to something else, you may look at the price. And what everybody does is they always fixate on the cheapest price. The least expensive price is what they always fixate on. And so they go, oh, Amazon Web Services is going to cost me $60 a month. That is that is good for me. Well, one of the things you find is once your uh, once your your web application starts getting more and more and more and more and more traffic, you start having to buy more and more and more resources, more storage, more bandwidth, more CPU cycles from Amazon, and all of a sudden that $60 per month can go up to four or five hundred dollars per month pretty quick. And so you may have looked at a dedicated server that would have cost you $100 a month, and then you saw AWS and you assumed that would cost you $60 a month. Well, at the end of the day, in six months, when your server is actually under a load, your web application is actually under a load, you may be paying Amazon $400 a month when your dedicated server would still only cost you 100 So this is something that you should be thinking about with this platform as a service. So basically, I mean, really, it does, like when you're thinking about platform as a service, the, the, the easiest way to get it through your head is think about shared web hosting. You, you get a folder somewhere up on the cloud. You get the ability to use PHP. You get the ability to use Ruby. You get the ability to use Perl or Python or something like that. All of that is installed already on the server. You just drop your code into the folder and then hopefully you run your code as long as 
whatever you, you created actually works. So when you're dealing with, dealing with platform as a service, this means you're basically, you're, you're uploading or you're using your web application. You're simply hosting it on their platform and their platform gives you all of the services to actually make it function. So that's really all there is to it. Again, we're going to have a couple more classes on these AAS as a service concepts because they are important. The big thing to remember whenever we're talking about as a service, whether we're talking about software as a service or infrastructure as a service or platform as a service or metal as a service, is this is the type of concept where there is not a test at the end of this. A lot of lines get blurred. So don't try to be a smarty pants um, and start arguing with people about what is software as a service and what is versus what is infrastructure as a service versus what is metal as a service. It's one of those where I'm trying to explain to you these th these ideas with, with rather concrete boundaries, but once you get into the real world, it all gets really fuzzy really quick. So, so that is just one thing to keep in mind with this. So as you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy. Today's class was PAAS, Platform as a Service Introduction. As always, I enjoy teaching this class and look forward to seeing you at the next one.